Today, we are going to dive into one of the most important topics in chemistry, Lewis diagrams. Let's start with a simple question. How do atoms know how to bond with each other? To answer that, we first need to talk about something very important, called valence electrons. Every atom has a tiny central nucleus, surrounded by electrons that move in specific paths or energy levels called shells, just like layers of an onion. The shell closest to the nucleus can hold only two electrons. The next one can hold eight. The one after that can hold a maximum of 18 electrons, and so on. The electrons in the inner shells stay tightly bound to the nucleus and rarely take part in chemical bonding, while the electrons in the outermost shell, known as valence electrons, are the most active and important. These valence electrons are the ones that determine how an atom will react or bond with other atoms because they are the easiest to share gain, or lose when forming molecules or compounds. Now, the number of valence electrons an atom has can be found directly from the periodic table. If you look at the table, elements are arranged in columns called groups. Every group tells us how many valence electrons the atoms in that column have. For example, all elements in the first column, like hydrogen, lithium, sodium, can have one valence electron. Those in the second column, like beryllium and magnesium, have two valence electrons. Then you skip the big block of metals in the middle called transition metals and continue counting. Group three has three, group four has four, and so on, all the way up to group eight, which has eight valence electrons. The only special case is helium. Even though helium sits in group eight, it has only two valence electrons not eight, because its outermost shell can hold only two electrons in total. So helium is already full and happy with two. Now, let's take a specific example. Suppose we pick chlorine. Find chlorine in the periodic table. Its symbol is Cl, and it sits in group seven. That means chlorine has seven valence electrons. Perfect. This number, or seven, is what we will represent in a Lewis diagram. A Lewis diagram is a simple visual representation that shows the valence electrons around an atom. Instead of writing out complicated electron configurations like 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5, we can just show the symbol of the element and dots around it to represent its outer electrons. So here we have these seven electrons as valence electrons. For chlorine, that would mean we draw the symbol Cl and then place seven dots around it. Now, we don't just put the dots randomly. Imagine an invisible square box around the element's symbol, one side on top, one on bottom, and one on each side. Each square can hold up to two dots. You should place the dots one by one around the four sides before you start pairing them. So, you'll place one dot on the top, one on the right, one on the bottom, one on the left, and then start pairing until all seven are placed. That's how you get a neat and clear Lewis diagram for chlorine. Every dot you draw stands for one valence electron. Now let us try this for a few simple elements. The simplest one is hydrogen, which has one valence electron, so its diagram is the symbol H with one dot. Carbon has four, so draw C with four dots, one on each side. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so draw O with six dots. Now let me know in the comments how many valence electrons nitrogen has and how will you draw its Lewis structure. It doesn't really matter where exactly you start placing the dots as long as they are around the symbol and no more than two on one side. Now you might be wondering, okay, fine, I can draw dots, but why are we doing this? Well, these diagrams help us understand how atoms bond with each other. When atoms come close to each other, they either share, give, or take valence electrons so that everyone gets a full outer shell, something we call the octet rule. 
According to this rule, most atoms are happy when they have eight valence electrons. It's like the atom finally feels complete. The only exception is hydrogen, which wants only two, because that's all it can hold in its first shell. This drive to achieve a full outer shell is what causes bonding, and Lewis diagrams help us visualize that bonding clearly. For example, let's take our first molecule, hydrogen gas, written as H2. Each hydrogen atom has one valence electron, but it wants two in each outer shell to be stable. So, what happens when two hydrogen atoms meet? They decide to share their electrons. Each one shares its single electron with the other. Now, because the two electrons are shared and counted for both atoms, each hydrogen atom now effectively has two electrons, exactly what it wanted. This way, both atoms become happy at the same time. So, the Lewis diagram for hydrogen gas shows two hydrogen atoms side by side with a shared pair of electrons between them. You can either draw it as two dots between the H symbols or, more commonly, draw a single line connecting them. That single line represents two shared electrons, and we call this a single bond. Now that we know a single line means two shared electrons, what if atoms share more than one pair of electrons? That's when we get double bonds and triple bonds. For example, take oxygen gas, written as O2. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. When they come together, they need to share two pairs of electrons to make sure both get a full octet. So, in the Lewis diagram, you'll see two lines between the two oxygen atoms. That's a double bond, representing four shared electrons. Similarly, take nitrogen gas, written as N2. Each nitrogen atom has five valence electrons. They will share three pairs of electrons to fill up their octets. That means we get a triple bond of three lines between the nitrogen atoms, representing six shared electrons. In these diagrams, the dots that are not shared are called lone pairs. They belong only to one atom and are not involved in bonding. Two dots together on one side are called a lone pair. So in oxygen, each atom has two lone pairs. And in nitrogen, each atom has one lone pair. Now let's learn the proper step-by-step -step process for drawing a Lewis diagram for any molecule. Let's start with a simple and very familiar molecule, or water, written as H2O. Step one is to count all the valence electrons. Each hydrogen atom has one valence electron. And since there are two hydrogens, that makes two electrons from hydrogen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Add them. Two from hydrogen plus six from oxygen gives a total of eight valence electrons. That's our total electron count, the number we'll use to draw our diagram. Step two is to choose the central atom. In most molecules, one atom sits in the center and the others connect to it. The central atom is usually the one that appears only once in the formula or usually all the other atoms will be bonded to. Here, we have one oxygen and two hydrogens. So oxygen goes in the middle, and the two hydrogens will connect to it. In step three, we will draw bonds with the central atom. As we have seen, a single bond is simply one pair of shared electrons. One electron comes from one atom, and the other comes from the atom it is bonding with. So here, to form a stable bond, each hydrogen shares its single electron with oxygen, and oxygen shares one electron with each hydrogen in return. This sharing creates two single bonds, one between oxygen and the first hydrogen, and one between oxygen and the second hydrogen. Every single bond uses up two electrons, so when we draw two such bonds, we've used a total of four electrons from the available eight valence electrons in the water molecule. At this point, each hydrogen is happy because it now has access to two electrons satisfying its duet rule, while oxygen still has some electrons left, which we'll use in the next steps to complete its octet. So now in step four, 
we put these four electrons as lone pairs on the central atom or oxygen. Remember, hydrogen can hold only two electrons in total, so it's already satisfied and doesn't need any more dots. Place the remaining four electrons as two lone pairs on the oxygen atom. Finally, in step five, we check if everyone is happy. Each hydrogen has two electrons or a duet, and oxygen has eight electrons or an octet. Noise, no need for double or triple bonds. So this is the Lewis diagram for a water molecule. Let's now try something a bit more complex, sulfur trioxide, written as SO3. Don't worry, the process is exactly the same. Just follow the five steps. In step one, count the valence electrons. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Each oxygen also has six valence electrons, and since there are three oxygens, that makes 18 from oxygen. Add six from sulfur and 18 from oxygen to get a total of 24 valence electrons. Step two is to choose the central atom. There's only one sulfur atom, so that becomes the central atom. Write sulfur in the center and arrange the three oxygens around it. In step three, we draw single bonds to the central atom. Each single bond uses two electrons, and since we have three bonds, one to each oxygen, this means we have used six electrons. Subtract six from 24, leaving 18 electrons remaining. Now we start adding the remaining 18 electrons as dots, or lone pairs, around the outer atoms. Each oxygen wants eight electrons total. So give each oxygen six more dots. That's three lone pairs per oxygen, right? This way we've used all 18 remaining electrons. Now check if everyone is happy. The oxygens are fine. Each has eight electrons, two from the bond, and six as three lone pairs. But sulfur has only six electrons, which are the six shared electrons from its three single bonds. Oh no, this is not a full octet yet. We can't just add more electrons out of nowhere. So what can we do? We can convert one of the lone pairs from oxygen into a shared pair, which means a new bond with sulfur. That means one of the oxygens will now form a double bond with sulfur. Now sulfur has eight electrons, four from these two single bonds plus four from the double bond, making eight in total. Awesome. Every atom now follows the octet rule. So the final Lewis diagram for sulfur trioxide is this, and that's it. Now before we wrap it up, note that Lewis diagrams are especially useful for covalent compounds, where atoms share electrons with each other rather than transfer them completely like in the case of ionic compounds. Every concept that comes after the Lewis diagram, like molecular geometry, polarity, hybridization, starts from this simple dot diagram. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.